All right. Good afternoon to you, my my lady. Good afternoon. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. Amen. And what do you have this evening? Um, well, this evening, um, I am going to say a little something, a little piece concerning marriage. So basically, that piece is for married people, including myself, and those that are planning to get married. Um, it may start a little... I won't say funny, but it may start a little way, but just relax and listen and listen to it till the end. However, I just want to take this time to say a pleasant good evening to each and everyone outside. And um, I'm going to go right into the reading. And like I said, it's entitled Marriage. <clears throat> when I got home that night, as my wife served dinner, I held her hand and said, I've got something to tell you. She sat down and ate quietly. Again, I observed the hurt in her eyes. Suddenly, I didn't know how to open my mouth, but I had to let her know what I was thinking. I want a divorce. I raised the topic calmly. She didn't seem to be annoyed by my words. Instead, she asked me softly, why? I avoid her question. This made her angry. She threw away her chopsticks and shouted at me. You are not a man. That night, we didn't talk to each other. She was weeping. I knew she wanted to find out what had happened to our marriage, but I could hardly give her a satisfactory answer. She had lost my heart to Jane. I don't love her anymore. I just pitied her. With a deep sense of guilt, I drafted a divorce agreement which stated that she could own our house, our car, and 30% stake of my company. She glanced at it and then tore it into pieces. The woman who had spent 10 years of her life with me had become a stranger. I felt sorry for her. <coughs> wasted I felt sorry for her wasted time resources and energy, but I could not take back what I had said, for I love Jane so dearly. Finally, she cried loudly in front of me, which was what I had expected to see. To me, her cry was actually a kind of release. The idea of divorce, which had upset me for several weeks, seems to be firmer and clearer now. The next day, I came back home very late and found her writing something at the table. I didn't have supper, but went straight to sleep and fell asleep very fast because I was tired after an eventful day with Jane. When I wake up, she was still there at the table writing. I just did not care, so I turned over and was asleep again. In the morning, she presented her divorce conditions. She didn't want anything from me, but needed a month's notice before the divorce. She requested that in that one month, we both struggled to live as normal a life as possible. Her reasons were simple. Our son had his exam in a month's time, and she didn't want to disrupt him with our broken marriage. This was agreeable to me, but she had something more. She asked me to recall how I had carried her into our bridal room on our wedding day. She requested that every day for the month's duration, I carry her out of our bedroom to the front door every morning. I thought she was going crazy. Just to make our last day together bearable, I accepted her odd request. I told Jen about my wife's divorce conditions. She laughed loudly and thought it was absurd. No matter what tricks she applies, she has to face the divorce, she said scornfully. My wife and I hadn't had any body contact since my divorce intention was explicitly expressed. So when I carried her out of the first day, we both appeared clumsy. Our son clapped behind us. Daddy is holding both me Daddy is holding mommy in his arms. His words brought me a sense of pain. 
from the bedroom to the sitting room, then to the door. I walked over 10 meters with her in my arms. She closed her eyes and said softly, don't tell our son about the divorce. I nodded, feeling somewhat upset. I put her down outside the door. She went to wait for the bus to work. I drove alone to the office. On the second day, both of us act much more easily. She, learned, she leaned on my chest. I could smell the fragrance of her blouse. I realized that I didn't look at her, at this woman, carefully for a long time. I realized she was not young anymore. There was fine wrinkles on her face. Her hair was graying. Our marriage had taken its toll on her. For a minute, I wondered what I had done to her. On the fourth day, when I left, lift her up, I felt a sense of intimacy returning. This was the woman who had given 10 years of her life to me. On the fifth and sixth day, I realized that our sense of intimacy was growing again. I didn't tell Jane about this. It became easier to carry her as the month slipped by. Perhaps the everyday workout made me stronger. She was choosing what to wear one morning. She tried on quite a few dresses, but could not find a suitable one. Then she saw it. All my dress have grown bigger. I suddenly realized that she had grown so thin, that was the reason why I could carry her more easily. Suddenly, it hit me. She had buried so much pain and bitterness in her heart. Subconsciously, I reached out and touched her head. Our son came in at the moment and said, Dad, it's time to carry mom out. To him, seeing his father carrying his mother out had become an essential part of his life. My wife gestured to my son to come closer and hugged him tightly. I turned my face away because I was afraid I might change my mind at this last minute. I then held her in my arms, walking from the bedroom through, through the sitting room to the hallway. Her hand surrounded my neck softly and naturally. I held her body tightly. It was just like our wedding day. But her much lighter weight made me sad. On the last day, when I held her in my arms, I could hardly move a step. Our son had gone to school. I held her tightly and said, I hadn't noticed that our life lacked intimacy. I drove to the office, jumped out of my car swiftly without locking the door. I was afraid any delay would make me change my mind. I walked upstairs. Jane opened the door and I said to her, Sorry, Jane, I do not want any divorce anymore. She looked at me astonished and then touched my forehead. Do you have a fever? She said. I move a hand off my head. Sorry, Jane, I said. I want divorce. My marriage life was boring, probably because she and I didn't value the details of our lives. Not because we didn't love each other anymore. Now I realize that since I carried her into my home on our wedding day, I am supposed to hold her until death do us apart. Jane seems to suddenly wake up. She gave me a loud slap and then slammed the door and burst into tears. I walked downstairs and drove away. At the flower shop on the way, I ordered a bouquet of flowers for my wife. The sales girl asked me what to write on the card. I smiled and wrote, I'll carry you every morning until death do us apart. That evening I arrived home, flowers in my hands, a smile on my face. I ran upstairs only to find my wife in the bed, dead. My wife had been fighting cancer for months and I was so busy with Jane to ever noticed. She knew that she had died soon and she wanted to save me from the whatever negative reaction from our son. In case we push through with the divorce, at least in the eyes of our son, I'm a loving husband. The small details of your lives are what really matters in a relationship.
It is not the mansion, not the car, property, not money in the bank. This creates an environment conducive for happiness, but cannot give happiness in themselves. So find time to be your spouse friend and do those little things for each other that build intimacy. Do have a real happy marriage. Thank you so much for listening and may God continue to bless each and everyone because like I said, we are blessed and not cursed. So we just have to receive the blessing from God. Have a wonderful week ahead. I love you guys. Good night. I uh, definitely made an um, observation in, in the reading by, um, you know, um, seeing that this is a ministry, you know, Christian-oriented. Do you feel this, this marriage was a Christian marriage or this just marriage? Um, it definitely was. Well, you see, the thing about it is people, they could have been like going to church but not being Christ-like. Because if this man was Christ-like, he wouldn't be cheating on his wife and then it, would be, uh, then it became too late for him to really patch things together with his wife. So you, so you wouldn't feel that that was reflective of a Christian sort of relationship? No, it wasn't. And um, I must say the reason I really brought this up is... Um, you know, I know in church, I won't say in the body of Christ, because in the body of Christ, people would not do such. But in church, there are people who actually go to church, and then they do those kind of stuff till it becomes too late. And um, the real crucial reason is, you know, this man had his wife, and he was cheating. And when he actually made the decision, which of course that decision came upon when he started being intimate with his wife, like, you know, the moments, the times that he carried her, that was the time that he really felt that, that love connection. So I thought that was a really good piece to bring out to married people in the sense that, you know, when you are married, this is not just you, it's over that you're married and it's over, but you have to spend time with each other, be each other's friend. Um, you know, it's not like when I come home, I know I'm married, but I'm on my own business and you are on your own business. It has to be something that is like you have a flower, you have to constantly put water into this plant, make sure it gets proper sunlight, because if it doesn't, then it's going to wither away. So that's the reason why I really bring up this, this piece. And again, of course, it was Valentine's Day, which is not something that I celebrate, um, but I'm just putting it out there. People tend to do a lot of things at that particular day because they feel it is that day for love, but love shouldn't be that way that one day. It's supposed to be an everyday event that you can just randomly go out and then bring some roses to your wife, bring her chocolate. You don't have to wait for that day, that 14th of February, to do all this big charade for your wife. Amen. So you feel the, the core of the story is reflective to Christian and non-Christian. It's just overall, in order to sustain a, a, a viable marriage or relationship it has to be cultivated and maintained to, to so that it can sustain itself that means the interest should be continuous even from being married before marriage with all the quoting it should continue it shouldn't stop it should just continue to keep it alive absolutely and um with that said um you see when we stay in the things of god and that's why i'm gonna put it on i will shift it onto this side being in the things of God. If we're in the things of God, things will stay together. But if we move out of the things of God, things will start falling apart. As we see in the story, this man went in and he started cheating until it was too late. So, you know, it's just like stay in the things of God. I think, this, not I think, this is the best thing. People that are married, it is best and better 
to stay in the things of God. And then your marriage is going to be a successful. Yeah, well, the word said to abide in me and I will abide in you. You know what I mean? And the, the, we've been definitely dealing with the scripture over the, the past couple of days of abiding in, in the vine. And, you know, once you stay in the vine, you are able to be fruitful. Absolutely. Because you get all your nutrients from the tree of life that gives life. So once you stay in the things of God and you maintain the principle, then you are able to bear fruits. As a believer, as a Christian, you cannot waver and come out of the things of God because then you lose the covering. Absolutely. Because even a person may say, oh, um, it's just my, a, little, a little thing I do there. It's just a, like, you know, some people talk about a white lie. It's just a little lie. But just look at it in that way. If you have a tree and then you actually have this branch on the tree and you probably just take a cutlass or something and you kind of like maybe um, heat it, heat that branch. You didn't cut it completely, but you cut part of that branch. That when you pass a day or two, you will see the leaves start falling apart because it's not fully into, it's not really um, fully attached to that tree. It's, it has a part that is cut. So it's in the same way, white lie, small lie, whatever lie you may call it, or whatever it is, even if it is just, you feel it's a little thing, you just don't do it. You just have to keep your branch fully tacked. Keeping the branch. And, and, you know, overall, the core of this, um, this, this little story here, I want to say this, that any one of us who is stronger in Christ should try to always bring back Jesus in the picture. Bring back what the Lord said. Absolutely. Bring it, bring it back. Because sometimes it might be the man that might be falling apart and the woman still have the substance going. She can, in a nice way, in the right timely way, bring in Jesus and bring in the prayer and come back to the table and not both of us going astray. Even if I have it, because you're not bringing it, I'm not going to bring it too. Anybody who is, because the devil is going to attack you where he knows you is weaker. Where you are weak. So whoever yeah, is weaker, he's going to attack the weaker vessel to try to deteriorate the entire tree. So even if the, the husband that has what it takes to say, you know, baby, let's pray and, you know, God is good and, you know, in the name of Jesus or whatever it is, or call you up and pray with you to bring you back in line, whoever it is that has that stronger connection or, you, you know, how that... Whatever it is, should, should be the one to upkeep the family or help to maintain the strength of the family in staying in Christ. So I think it's important that we all understand that. Because sometimes if one person going bad, the weakest link is where it starts. But that weak link doesn't have to break all the way. Well, that is very true because like uh, my pastor always says that we all grow, um, we, add, we all are at different stages spiritually. So back to just what you just said, it might be the man or the woman who is stronger. We cannot say, well, one cannot say, well, okay, I, um, because this one is weak, I will just let her weak. We are supposed to uphold each other, support each other. The one that is stronger, try to bring the other one up so that that one will be stronger. Because it's, it's a teamwork. It's a work. It's a teamwork. And of course, you are not doing it just for self, but for the honor and the glory of God. Amen. And, and not just for the honor of glory of God, but if you are able to show strength in what you're doing, the person who is weak will see God in you Absolutely. and in your actions and therefore rise to the occasion and know that, man, God is in you. I want what, what you have. That is very true because the word says um, with concerning um, husband and, and wives in um, Second Peter chapter 3, it says um, that... Um, if, even if the man is not doing the right thing, but because of what the wife will do like, for example, being submissive, which a lot of people do not want to hear, but with you, that submission, you will change your husband. And if you want to really know, you can go into that book and you could read it yourself. It says it in Second Peter chapter 3 that the woman, by her actions, by the things that she do, which is good, it will help bring this man in line. Amen. Well, it's not only that reference alone, but overall, a believer in Jesus Christ, once you apply his principle, he can't fail. No, he and cannot. And he, he knows those principles work, but we, in our carnal way, cannot perceive it. 
So that's why you see the carnal man receive not the things of God. So once we are in the spirit, we are able to adhere to the things of God. And then we will see the workings that what God say is what will work to be productive, positive, and to bring the happy result that he has promised that the married people should enjoy that love overflowing and the, the, the abundance of wealth and the abundance of life and the abundance of family life and everything going to be well put together. Once we believe in, in that God is God and he is who he is and he has set down those principles, regardless to how much you don't feel it can work, you have to believe in it. Trust him where you cannot trace him and then he's going to show you that my way is the right way. Amen. 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 All right. So we thank you for that reading there. I thought one of the listeners might have listened and say, well, this is something about marriage, but it doesn't represent a Christian family. So I thought it was appropriate to interject this in there because Absolutely. overall marriage is marriage. And even um, with being married, even if you, you're not born again and you're married, I, 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 I see this connection that once you have taken up a principle that God has set in his word, you are already connected to the kingdom. Because you have a priest or a pastor, whoever somebody to, 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 to bring you in to his covenant, which is marriage. God is able to speak in that relationship. So even if somebody is not married now, is, is not a Christian now, but they're married and they start to use that principle. Because that principle is a principle that has been set up. It will work for the just and the unjust. That's the way it's been set up. So once the principle has, the principle has been used... It will work for anybody who use it because it's a principle. Once you apply that principle, that principle is going to work for anybody who applies it to their life. Yeah, um, you are you are very right on that. But I just want to further on on this. We said you know it doesn't really relate to the Christian family, but um, believe it or not, um, these are things that Christian family do um, go um, through, especially when a person, one of the party, is weak. Or if maybe the woman is saved and the man is not saved, because we'll still call it a Christian family because the woman is covering her husband or the husband covering the, the, the wife. So, of course, this really tells you that there's a lot of things that you really have to put together. You know, for example, if one is a believer and one is not, you know, you uphold that principle that principle that my husband just spoke about, you upheld that principle so that things will stay together. Yeah, the principle will work for anybody mm -hmm. who, who believe in the principle and then God is able to show his example that once you use his principle and you stay with him, he is going to give you victory. But many times what happens is if one person not doing it, put the other person say, well, I'm not doing it either. It shouldn't if be you're so. Not doing, no, it shouldn't be that way because God expects you to believe in him and he's going to give you the victory. Don't care what it is. If the other person not doing it right, you do it. Continue. I'm going to, I'm going to give you the victory in that situation if you uphold my word. But many times when the other person not doing it, you say, well, you're not doing it, I'm not doing it. So now you give the devil a foot in to come in and Amen. create havoc. Amen. And then the thing could never be fixed because... He fall out a line, you fall out a line, everything go chaos, everything go chaos. Anyhow, six more minutes before the hour and we have a winner this evening. And uh, we had a, oh, that young lady again. Um, what's her name again? Tamaya. Not Tamaya. The other one we said that, I think We're Angus. Rich. Angus. Oh, Angus. Yes, yes. Angus has a lot of potential. A lot of potential, a lot of potential. Guys, we encourage you, before you get on to read, you do a little practice run. The words that you don't think you know them very clearly, you know how to, to, to pronounce them properly. You try them out, probably you jot them down somehow, and when you get to them. So you kind of practice before you get on the phone, so you could really do it. Some people, they come on and they really have it down pack, and they make a little fumble in between, and they fall off. <laughs> well, I've said it before, and I will say it again. With Angus, um, with um, her name is Arisha, Arisha Angus. Arisha Angus' problem is really not her words that she doesn't know. She knows her words. I must say it. I've listened to this young lady and she knows her words. And I will say it again. She is just too excited. And it's okay to be excited. But I will ask please that if, your parent, if the mother is there and she's listening, that she has to focused. relax. Stay a little focused. Because this young lady has 
she has it. She has the potential. She, she has can potential. read. Yes, she I know this herself. young lady can read. She can read. Amen. Yeah. So who we got this <laughs> evening? Uh, uh, well, <laughs> well, uh, we have is it Junior Bishop? Junior Bishop, right? Yes. Um, of course. Um, Tomoya Oakley. <laughs> a little again if he did not call that would be the winner but yeah. unfortunately Tomoya, yes. yeah. <laughs> junior bishop is the winner for junior this bishop. evening he was he was he was on point he was really, he was clean, really on point clean calm and he his phone wasn't too clear but he was clean you know what i mean he was a clean 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 he went reader. right through with the reading right through perfect exhibition from the top i mean everything all the way down all the way to the end so my brother bishop give us a call back let's get your information so we can pass it over to the people where you're going to get your prize and we thank you congratulations to junior bishop and in the name of jesus and remember all cannot win (laughs) only we only have one winner and here on choice radio we try to do it as fair as possible that whoever is the winner deserve it amen amen <laughs> so guys we thank you once again in the name of jesus keep praying for choice radio that we continue to lift up the name of jesus and now we're, we're talking to my wife this evening i i listen to i hear all kinds of people on all kind of radio that are talking about god and whatever it is and i'm saying i wonder if some of these people really save man because for me as a believer in jesus christ it's certain things is just not appropriate. Well, I, I will answer this as clear. Some people have information, but they do not have the Holy Spirit. And it's simple as that, you know, and I'm not going to take no apologies for saying it. Some people have the word. They have the information. They, they can read the Bible. They know the word, but they don't have the Holy Spirit. Because if a person has the Holy Spirit in them, there are certain things coming on radio day in and day out. You don't do these things. It, it can't. It, 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 it just can't happen. Can happen. Mm-mm, mm-mm. And, and that's why you know somebody might listen and say, "Well, we think you know we we just trying to say, look, we must know if we are in the vine. We must know if we say that if we die the next minute, there must be a connection with the Holy Spirit. You know what I mean? So we just saying this to invoke something within us that we are going to strive to receive Christ and abiding in the vine. Amen? It's not to put down nobody, but it's just a saying for those ba- with baby on board, those who know they got the Holy Spirit, be careful what you listen. Be careful what you, 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 you participate in. Be careful of what you get involved, what you, what you allow to, to, to dictate your mind and get you, you know, because those things will put you in a, in a state of, of, of just disrepair, if you understand what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, we all know that the truth hurts but i just want to say yes it does hurt but you see the good thing that comes out if when you take what is that you know that is wrong that is is not good and you do the right thing that's what it's like that's the power right there right because if you are in a school and you have your mother or one of your family member being your your teacher your professor whatever and they're always making you think that you're on top (laughs) and they're against you they're really against you because at the end of it all if you did not do something right and they tell you that you were right they are really putting you at risk of knowing nothing so when you get correction somebody tells you look something that you did is not the right way is not right you just need to do what's right and if you don't know find out because that's where the power comes from Thank I like you. that. That's what the power comes for. You catch me with that one. That's good. Hey, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your power. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your love, Almighty God, that you have brought us into your marvelous light, Almighty God. Father, we pray that each and everybody listening who love you, who came into the true God and want to feel your power, they want to know that you're real. They want to know, God, that you are on their side, Father God. Father, we pray that everything we are able to bring on Choice Radio is going to lift your name, God, that your people who are called by your name, they will feel you and know that you are with them, Almighty God, because you said you will never leave us, nor forsake us those who receive you, Almighty God. You have given us power to become sons of God, and we thank you, Almighty God. So, Father, continue to bless us, Lord, as we continue to deliver the truth of the gospel, the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That will set us free. The truth will make us free, and we love you in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 All right, guys, go. Be ready for the next program coming up. Are you ready? Can we do this? Brother Philip. 
Good night. Bishop, please call us right now, Bishop. Junior Bishop, call us and give us your phone number information. We're waiting for you right now. Thank you. 347-663-8638. Talking heads talking to us on the television. Silver screen preachers and politicians say they got the answer first. They got to squeeze us. Send a little money. There's a tax on Jesus. Fix it with a prayer. Fix it with a dollar. Does anybody out there ever want to holler? Oh, 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 oh. It all comes down to love. Oh, 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 oh. Well, self-help gurus got a best sense. Regulex got a drag queen bank teller. One nine hundred look into the crystal. NRS says you better buy a pistol. They made a little pill, but it might cause cancer. It's just a cheap thrill when you're looking for the answer. There's only one answer. Another million dealer on the back street talking to your children. You cry for help, and nobody listens. You lie awake at night wondering what's missing. Who can put an end to all the confusion? Look into your heart for the one solution. Radio, your life, your salvation.